Okay, this is my version of a commutator trimming lathe, specifically for slot car motors. Current designs require an XY compound table, which is expensive. Typically the way you would run a metalworking lathe. I got the bright idea of maybe running it rather like a woodworking lathe, where you have a cutting tool that you can traverse along against the tool rest. So there we traverse it and the cutting forces are held against the tool rest. And when we finish cutting we can lift it out of engagement and wind it back. Now this is already set for the comm I intend to true and I've also set the stop here which limits the travel so that I can't accidentally crash it into the soldered end of the comm. You set that up in advance, you can just put it on loosely and push it into place, eyeballing it against the, the commutator. The, these ball bearings form the cradle, and the motor drives via a belt which is fairly normal, and these cradles have short stops in them, this one does too. You generally don't need it at the um, gear end, but you do need it because people cut the axle off very close. So I've got stops here. In this case it's on the other side. So you can turn it over and you release these clamps and you can move the guides in and out to adapt to almost any length of slot car motor. You'll notice I'm not using this little handle. Looks pretty, but it doesn't work very effectively. Okay, with the tool out of the way, I'm going to load in the armature. There we go. That's ready to go. This is a 12 volt motor rated about 9,000 RPM at 12 volts. At about 6 volts it turns the armature about 3,000-ish, 3,500 RPM, which is fine for the cutting. We can speed it up later to polish it. And uh, hopefully every slot car enthusiast has a power supply. I'll switch mine on. We're almost ready to go. Okay, next thing we've got to set the, the cutting diameter. So what we do is look for what we think is the worst point on the commutator. And go there. And we just simply release the grub screw holding the cutting tool, push it into the deepest divot. That's as far as we really want to ever clean it up. So it means we don't have to have the Y axis because we're not looking for size. Cut this and turn it on. And I'm going to use paraffin applied via a syringe as a cutting lubricant. You must keep it wet. And here we go. Now I've run into stop. I can just pull the tool out of the way. Out of harm's way there. And stop. We need to look at the grooves and has it cleaned up? Well, yes, it has. There's still some evidence, but that's ideal. We don't really want to take off more than we have to. Normally, you want to just clean out the grooves with a toothpick to make sure there's no swarf or edges over there. If it leaves a really horrible finish, then your tool needs sharpening. 
Yeah, well now we're ready to polish and to do that we're going to use a strip of 1200 emery paper There we go, pretty nicely skimmed commutator. I can maybe do a bit more polishing, but I'm going to leave it like that because this is sacrificial, this isn't a good motor. Maybe give it another touch with the emery paper, but that's to all intents and purposes done. Okay, my hands are in the photo because I need to get the autofocus to focus some people would like to polish that further with chemical polish like Brasso I don't like doing that it tends to leave a residue and you need to be very diligent about cleaning it off as far as I'm concerned the finish left behind by 1200 water paper is more than adequate for the job